Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are going to be looking at a, um, a headset here that is a little loose, as you can see. Our customer brought it in and said they had um, they're having a little bit of problems with this. So what we're going to do is we will uh, fix this, tighten this up a little bit. So to begin with, uh, obviously there's a there's different different pieces here that you can see. This is very loose, and this is really what the problem is. What has probably happened, and again, I'll have to take a look at it on the inside, but it looks like this has popped off. And as you can see, this is what has happened. And apparently it popped off when he was riding or something like that. And uh, what I wanted to do is take a look at themselves. Apparently they have, if they decided to put their, their, um, their cable housing on the inside of the fork, I typically do not do that. I would actually prefer to be more like this so that it does not interfere with the uh, with the, the movement of, of the bike itself so this is the way it should be now it, the very nice thing is that since it is coming out then you can see that there is a there's a special kind of nut that they use here which actually will as you tighten up the bolt here then this will slide up and begin and what this will do is actually grab the inside wall of the fork itself so that the stem and the fork are able, are able to maintain their cohesion and not slip or, or, or shift any, at any time. So I'm going to slide this right back down here and just line this up again. And what I'll do then is, so what happens is, that just get a little more background on, on what happens with these forks. So this fork is like I say, they, they call it a threaded fork. So if I were to, let me take out the stem here one more time. Let's put it down here. Okay. So what happens is you have, you have these threads here and they actually thread on the tube that follows from the fork all the way up through the head tube and what it'll do is by threading it on you then have, the, uh, you have some bearings in here, you have some bearings in here and these two bearings are what allow the thread to rotate with the movement of the handlebars and then <clears throat> as, you, as you put on the, the bearing race on the top, there's a bearing race on the bottom as well and the, 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 bearing, the bearing, uh, actually a bearing nut, actually you should put it called bearing nut on the top, is then twisted down until it causes there enough, to be enough contact that the, th the, the fork will move uh, nicely, but at the same time will not be, not be too, uh, have too much play in it. So it, sh it should, they, there's, there's, a, there's a really fine line between being too loose and being too tight. And obviously it's just a, it's just a feel, you get it there and you're like, that's nice. Because obviously with time, um, they do wear, obviously the bearing races can wear, bearings themselves can wear, you start, start to introduce dirt in there and that just acts as an abrasion. All it does is start to chew up the, the bearings and, and start to remove the finish on them. They're very strong and very hard, that's why they're made up from hard steel. But even then, regardless, there is still <clears throat> the tendency for them to start to, get, start to wear. So they either need to be replaced or something like that for the most part. So you have a you have a washer here as well, and that washer then is a lock washer, and then you have a lock nut on top of that to hold everything in place so none of this will move or rotate during use. That's the whole point. So they, they, they tighten down with the washer between them, and you tighten down, and once those are tight, then the intent is, it's not always it, the design is actually, but the intent is that it, they, will not, they will not shift or, or rotate with any movement. So that's, that's what a threaded fork will do. Okay. So, in order for us to now fix this, we'll go ahead and put the handlebars and stem back in the fork itself. And right there. And what I'm just going to do is just going to line this up as best I can. I just eyeball it a little bit here just to make sure that the, the handlebars are, are perpendicular to the wheel. And now that I do that. Then I'm just all I'm going to do is now tighten up this bolt right here, and carefully keep it. Try to keep this without moving too much. Okay, so huh. now I'm discovering what the problem is. Maybe so apparently this has been stripped out. The nut on the inside of it has been stripped out because I cannot tighten this up. This should be tightening up and it's not tightening. So that tells me that it was stripped out. So, but of course, as always with the bike shop, you have all the spare parts. So let's take a look and see what we can find. Alright. 
first we'll take it out and let's just confirm that this is the case. And ah, there we go. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna actually take this off completely. And we will see what the problem is. So now we can see that there is actually a crack right there and this so this this uh, this this slanted nut is completely broken causing it to not grab anymore which of course then caused it to pop the head the head handlebars to pop off with the stem and all that stuff. So this is actually quite easy to fix. I just had to find another piece, one of these and I have these, I have hundreds, no, I have hundreds, I have several, several lying around then I can find one and I'll just have to replace it and that should take care of it. So as I look through all of my stems, I have several that are obviously very similar. Uh, some that are obviously each of these, this is called the, the threadless, is that stem for the threadless uh, fork, that's what these are. And these are what's called, this is what's called a quill stem, and of course, which is pretty much everything else. So again, the nice thing is, is they're not too much, uh, not too much different between the two. And of course, I keep all the little, junk, all the junk that I have here. And I'm thinking that this guy, even though it's a little rusted, this, we can clean this guy up really nicely. And this should be a nice replacement. So I went ahead with my Dremel tool and cleaned off a lot of the rust to bring it back to a more or less clean condition and prepare for installation of the mic. Okay, so I just realized as I was looking through all of my quill stems here that this is a 21 millimeter diameter um, nut while this is 22 millimeter and I looked at all my other ones and everything else I have is 22 millimeter. That leads me to believe, because they're for the most part they're standard sizes, that leads me to believe that this was the wrong size they put in the bike. This actually should have been a 22 millimeter. And I'm gonna test it out by trying it in the, in the fork now to see if this actually works. And I believe that is the reason because of the over tightening this thing split because there's too much play on the on the sides and it didn't hold but we will test that out really soon okay so let's test this guy first and I just want to see if it can go down in there and it does not want to go in there and it looks like the reason they went oh okay so the reason they went with this um, the smaller size is because it looks like they're using a loom, a, 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 no it's steel, it's, I thought you'd say this, it looks like it's an aluminum nut they have here on top. Okay, well, well, hmm, let's try if we can get that down in there. If not, what I might do is just shave off a little bit here, just take off a little bit and allow that to, because it is so close. I mean, just, if I were to take off a little bit of these ridges, I think that would be perfect and this will slide right in there and then we've solved the problem. And I, I would feel actually more comfortable because I would know that the diameter of the of this thing here is actually going to fit better inside then than this because I know just by looking at it, just, just by eyeballing it, it, this is definitely just, it's just slightly larger. Again, by one millimeter, but that one millimeter makes all the difference in the world.
Okay, let's see if we have some luck here. Okay, it's, it's just off, so I need to take off a little bit more in order to get that down inside there, but it is so close now. This is exactly what I want to see. Okay, so I ground this thing down quite a bit. Uh, took off most of the flanges here. There's a little some veins there. I took them off. I did ground a little bit on the back side, because of course this was really easy to take off some material here, some of the steel. This was obviously much more difficult, but I didn't want to take off too much from this side because this is the point of failure that on, on the other one. I definitely don't want to compromise this one as well. So I just I just rounded it off a little bit, took off some of the burrs and things like that. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. And if I slide this in here now, it slides in like a glove. It's just perfectly fitting. I mean, this is exactly what I wanted. Matter of fact, it's a little, it's a little, <laughs> I have to be a little careful because it's actually a little bit, a little bit tight. But again, once it's in there, that's exactly what, it, what I wanted to do. Just tighten up the bolt and pull that up tight, cinch it onto the fork, and then it will be done. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together. And first of all, I'm gonna thread this on here. Actually, I'm just gonna turn this up here like this a little bit. And hold it in place. this in here now. Okay. I'll just go ahead and I'll slide this in here and it should slide in nice and tight the way I want it. Now, let's line it up again and tighten down. Somewhat straight, I think that may, I may have to readjust it a little bit. But okay, so now the true test to get out on the road and see how this thing holds. But I'm feeling it pretty tight. It's not it's not moving like this. So I may have to I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off just a little bit. So let's take this off again and let's just move it over just a tad. There we go, right about there. Now, I'm going to hold them both in place, tighten down. There we go. A little bit tighter. That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight, all right. Okay. So it looks like the, uh, the, the fork is now good, stem is now holding well. So was able to figure out how to, to fix this problem. This is exactly the reason why I have my channels because obviously the, um, the solution was to go out and buy a new stem and replace the whole thing. At least if, if a bike mechanic were to do this, they would just say, you have to replace the stem because there's a broken part on it. And this is not what I like to do in my, in my channel, obviously. I like to say, okay, what can I do to make something work with what I have, because this is this is the this is my fun. This is what the, the challenges that I find in fixing a bike is exactly why I do this. So we f we found a solution. It was a little bit different, maybe a little bit out of the box, but what it does is this will work just as well, if not even better, than the one that was in there originally, because the original one broke. It split. So because this one is not, I don't think this is going to split. But again, they're not designed to do that, and I think that this will then hold for 
as long as the bike will, will hold up, this will be uh, this will be fine. So again, it works great. It's um, stable. Doesn't wiggle. Doesn't wobble. It's got a decent. There's no movement. And uh, I think we're done with this. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and click on that bell icon so you're notified of new content.